Mr Speaker, <coughs> excuse me, this has been a, a, an interesting debate um, over what Mr Guy, the Minister, I think the second or third Minister that's dealt with this piece of legislation tonight, described the bill as straightforward. And he's right. <coughs> this is a straightforward piece of legislation, which in theory, given that I think nearly everybody in this House, apart from the Greens and the Māori Party, are supporting it, should have flown through here with a high degree of, uh, of ease. The bill may be straightforward, sir, but the issue of assistance and support to victims is not. I'll say again that <coughs> the Labor Party is supporting the passage of this bill for a very simple reason. We wrote the original one. I think a speaker over there said we sort of you know, helped it through. No, no, we wrote it and we passed it in government. And the government today is extending by two years the provisions, and we have no problem with that. It extends the provisions that we put in the legislation when we wrote and passed it. So the bill is straightforward, sir, but the issue is not. And throughout this debate, it's been very instructive to listen to the words that have not been spoken, to listen to the silence exhibited especially from the party over there, the ACT Party. Because one of the issues that we have raised as an acid test for one's commitment to victims, and I agree with colleagues who say, I suspect there is, I hope there's not, I suspect there's no one in this parliament that does not have a genuine belief that victims should be supported, despite all the political sort of gas bagging, uh, you know, uh, that we've seen from some people on the other side. I say even to the ACT Party, who believes they have a monopoly on supporting victims, who believe they come off a higher plane and that everybody's sort of commitment to victim support is lower than theirs, I say to them that their silence has been deafening over this issue tonight. Absolutely deafening. Absolutely deafening. Because on the one hand, Mr Garrett and those members get up and say they support victims. On the other hand, the issues that were raised tonight, where this government that they prop up have pulled the rug out and cut the funding to victims of sexual crime and sexual abuse, aided and abetted by the ACT Party who purports to support victims. Not sir, one word tonight about that policy stance. And it's interesting that every minister who has either been in that chair, sir, or introduced this bill, has not made one contribution in addressing that issue. The only member, and I think he made a reasonably robust contribution, I was out the other side, but the only member, sir, who had the guts to raise this issue and at least address it was Chester Burroughs. When Chester Burroughs said, well, I mean, tantamount to admitting that his government cut the funding, of course, by saying we will make a priority, we will make it a priority in government to address the issue. He said that. And I have respect for him for it. But not one other member. They prattled on, sir, and listed all sorts of acts and legislation that they passed. And that is a, un, an undeniable fact in this House. The quality of that legislation, many of those pieces of legislation, sir, is in question, and their effectiveness or lack of it to support victims. But it is an undeniable fact that this government has fired through various pieces of legislation that they claim will assist victims. The jury's out on that. But that, sir, does not negate the issue that has been raised time and time again tonight about the lost souls, the lost souls, and there are a number of them, who have committed suicide because they could not get the support and the funding that they needed that they used to get under the last government, and that is an undeniable fact, that they know, look, prove it, the member says. Prove it. Have a look at the last budget. Have a look at the policy statement. That's the first time that member, Turiana Turia, has squeaked any words in this House about that issue. All she's done tonight is grin about it and laugh about it. And I say again to that member, when she gets a constituent coming into her office who is a victim of sexual abuse and cannot get funding because of what Nick Smith and the National Party has done in cutting that funding, I wonder what Turiana Turia will say to that woman or that man or that young person. 
Will she grin at them? And will she say, as she did tonight, prove it? Because thanks to her vote, what she could say is she's part of the problem because she voted for it, she aided and abetted it, and she supports it today. And the proof of that is not once in this debate did that minister get up and even mildly express some disapproval, sir, on behalf of those lost souls, men and women, who every day and every night wait for some assistance. And Mr Burroughs said, we'll make it a priority. Well, I, good on him. At least he's prepared to actually say that. But the problem, as I said with Mr Burroughs, sadly, he ain't in a position to deliver. I'm sure he's knocking on the doors of his ministers saying, we have to do it, we have to make it a priority. An agency has to fund these people. Something has to be done. He is a constituent member. He's probably had these folks in his office. But not one other member addresses the issue. They talk about everything else. They talk about how, the fact that they've passed legislation for victims' rights and other things. OK, all well and good. But not one member tonight from any party will get up, apart from Miss Laugh-a-Lot down there who grins and laughs over the issue through the debate, not one member will get up and say, we will make this a priority, we will make this happen tonight or tomorrow or on Monday at Cabinet. And my colleague uh, Brendan Burns mentioned Ken Clearwater, a constituent of mine, doing the Lord's work with male survivors of sexual abuse. Ken Clearwater and his clients wait every day. They waited in the budget before last. They waited in the last budget, as every man and woman and young person who is the victim of a sexual crime waits for the help that they used to get under the last government. And I say to Ms Turia, I don't have to prove it. The proof is every person who got the counselling and the psychological assistance and the me their medical needs met by ACC over nine years of a Labor government, that is the proof. The men and women who survived the trauma of sexual abuse and sexual crime under nine years of a Labor government because they got the funding out of ACC, because they got assistance, I say to Ms Turia, that's the proof. They're alive today. And the proof that the system is broken, that the injustice has been perpetrated and is aided and abetted by every last one of those members there who would not stand up, and there's a word for it, and I'd love to use it, but wouldn't stand up and take a call and even talk about the constituents that have walked into their office, but oh, they'll talk about everything else. They'll talk about legislation, the bail act, anything else. But I say to them, what are they going to say to the constituents of their electorates, Mr. Chair, Mr. Speaker, who walk into their office, and many won't walk in, because of the shameful acts that have been done to them, they will hide in places, they will hide from their families, they will not ask for help, they, they, they hope and they pray that our government will stand by them, but because of the nature of their crimes, often they feel, the nature of the, the, the crimes that were perpetrated against them, they feel ostracised, and they rely on a government to say that they will protect the most vulnerable. And I would have thought there's not a lot of politics in this. I would have thought there's not a lot of politics in a government, and there's a lot of politics to be gained, positive politics, from a government and a minister to at least do what Mr Burroughs did and get up and say, we should make this a priority. But not one minister, not the ACC minister, not the health minister, not Nathan Guy, not any member would stand up and the two parties that are led by the nose like lambs to the slaughter, the tough on crime party, not even the sensible sentencing trust, has ever made a comment in decrying the fact the national government has cut the funding to these victims of sexual crime. And I wonder why. Why wouldn't you make a comment? Why wouldn't you express anger? So I say, to, so why wouldn't they, sir? So I challenge them at the conclusion of this debate, perhaps, to use Mr Burroughs as an example, get off their chuffs, go to their various ministers and demand that that funding, I don't care if it comes from ACC, I don't care where it comes from, but they are the victims, that is the acid test, sir, not this piece of legislation and a couple of clauses to extend it. The acid test is whether that crew over there will help the most vulnerable who have nightmares every day and night because of what was done to them.